Welcome, time for some art fun. Today we've got really exciting happy mail, so stick around. I have a sweet, dear, wonderful subscriber who has been commenting basically from day one. And she sent me this little box, which I'm actually, actually going to save this box because it's the perfect size for reusing as my no art no, wait, how does it go? No box art box challenge that Jenna gets creative started here on YouTube. And so I'm going to paint this. I'm, I love this sticker. It's hilarious. So I'm going to keep the sticker, but I'm going to paint around it. I hate that I ripped it when I opened the box. But I had asked her if it was okay to unbox this for the channel, and she played it so humble, and she was like, well, open it, take a look, see if you think it's good enough to make a whole video on. I don't think it's that much. But if you do make a video, just, you know, leave me nameless, which of course I'm happy to do. So I did open it. And what I saw was, <laughs> you'll, you'll see, because yes, it is indeed worth opening together. And that's what we're going to do today. So I don't know if you all saw when Miranda Watson over at Alkali Creek Art sent me the art box takeover which was originated by jude and her pencil here on youtube and it's an art box much like this one that has curated materials that mimic a subscription box that you would pay for but us art tubers send it to each other so it's making the rounds it's been with willow rose arlen who has a really good newer channel here on youtube i'm a big fan of hers i watch all of her videos and so i sent mine over to her after miranda sent hers to me but when miranda sent me her art box for this challenge, I made this little bunny and I used Faber-Castell stencils that she sent me. I used these Marabou sprays, acrylic spray that she sent me, and which you can still see some <laughs> remnants of here. Maybe you can't see it. Usually you can't see it in the videos, but I can faintly see it here. And these neon pink, um, green and orange Neo Color ones. So I used the neon pink and I love how that came out. And then she also sent me to me, the most exciting thing that I got was this. There were actually two things that were super exciting, but this was one of them. Things that I'd wanted for a long time and never got myself. This was one of them. The other one was a Pentel Aquash ink brush, which I'm obsessed with that too. But this ac acrylograph from Archer and Olive, it's a seven millimeter tip and it is just the coolest thing. This one is in like a royal blue, a purpley deep blue and I love it and this is the only one I own because I got it in that package but I lost it when I got that <laughs> and you see me unbox it in that video so after that video this I like seriously don't have words just from opening this for a second just to see if it's something I wanted to fully unbox here I could see what she had done and she went totally nuts and she was so generous so she sent me this. Obviously, it had our information, but I took it that off. But it still had this hilarious sticker. I like to drink coffee and pretend I know what I'm doing. And <laughs> that was my whole first two years of my career. This would have been like the actual thing. So let's open it up. And like I said, I'm going to keep this box. I hope I didn't mess with it too much when I opened it. But look what she, look what she did. Look what she did. She literally art boxed this thing up and I'm going to keep the tissue paper. Like I'm seriously going to reuse this whole thing. So, okay, actually let's do this. Let's take everything out of the box and just have the tissue paper because the box top is creating like a, um, a shadow that's going to mess with you. So look at this pretty, eee, look what she did. So this is all I saw yesterday. And this is all I had to see before I closed it, ran out of the room, and darn near started crying to my husband with excitement because I saw this. People. <laughs> she sent me also, how cute is this? Little ribbon. Love and the little fish. Oh, it's so cute. And the little chicken and the little paws. Like she knows I love cute stuff. We love pets. Oh my gosh, don't we? Don't we? And actually, to that end, let's give you a quick shot of what my pupper's doing here while we're filming this. Yep. Sleepy pup. Just thought you should know. Happy in his bed. Got his bone right there in case of emergency. And this is who's keeping me company while I'm doing this little unboxing of my Happy Mail. So let's do big picture and then we'll drill down on different things. And obviously I'm going to swatch. But first things first, we have a whole slew of these absolutely gorgeous acrylograph 
seven. Oh, this one's three millimeter. Oh my gosh. These are three millimeter even better. Okay, I'm so excited because that's one of the things I love is this little tip. A lot of my other paint pens, and these are acrylic paint pens, a lot of my other paint pens are super chunky and just big. So having something for details is life and I can just, they're so thin and easy to transport. I can throw them in my travel sketch bag and do so much with them. And this is one of my favorite colors. I love green. And she got me a lot of really, I mean, these are a lot of my favorite colors. If you see my work, I love greens. I love this sort of red, like a rusty red. I love deep yellows, like Naples yellow, buttery yellows, warm yellows. So, oh, so excited to test these out and to go through each color. But let's, let me take my time. But this is literally the one where I saw this and I went to my husband and said, I'm afraid I'm going to cry. If I unbox this, I'm going to make a fool of myself and cry. I'm going to save this for a second from now. And then I also saw this. She got me the um, jewel toned metallic set. And just look at this. Just look. Because I just unbought. I hope I didn't just have like nothing but reflection. Look how cool this is. She got me the Marabi. <laughs> okay, I'm going to get this right. She got me the Komarabi jewel toned metallic set. And I do have the... Uh, oh, okay, I got distracted. I'm distracted. I'm distracted. I'm, oh my god. <laughs> Look how beautiful. Wow, I have to touch. I have to touch. Oh, okay, of these colors, which one would you want to get your brush into first? This insane red. Is this even coming across how beautiful this is? This beautiful purple, super royal purple, imperial purple. This is gorgeous blue. It looks like an ultramarine-ish type blue, but super metallic. This such a pretty, like almost like a pastel metallic green. Beautiful. A super gold yellow and a rosy red. A rosy red and a brick, more brick red, like a pyrrol and a quin rose. Gorgeous. I cannot wait to use these. So I saw these two things already and I was like, what is happening? Why? Why is she so nice? Why is she making me cry? I don't understand. I wasn't ready for this. She made me feel like it was going to be such a little thing. Guys, this alone is so not little. This is a huge deal. And it, it just means so much to me. So I got those. And then it says giggle. And I love this little clip. Like, this is the cutest. I need to do something with this. And I need to do something with this and, like, rehome it in my studio somewhere. Because this is so me. Like, come on. Creating cute art. That's literally what I'm aiming for with every piece I do. <laughs> Like, could this be more on brand? No. Thank you so much. So even that's the cutest. And then I have this little thick little baby. And I don't know if it's a sticker or what, but it's so cute. My little baby. <laughs> oh, and these are watercolor pans. Okay, I'm standing up this whole time, by the way, guys, because I'm, like, freaking out. Mission Gold. I did a whole video on these. She definitely would have seen me do that whole series on Mission Gold that actually another viewer got me these really generous dots to try. I, like, don't want to break this. I'm sure it's supposed to be broken, but a watercolor, I'm pretty sure any watercolor she sends me would probably be granulating just based on my obsession. So we'll see. Oh yeah, PBK. Cobalt black. Cobalt black. So that'll be granulating. This is super helpful. First of all, thank you for this amazing handwriting because it's very readable. Thank you. So PBK 27 is the pigment in here. Excited to try that. Obviously not going to open the card on camera because she wants to be anonymous. And then, ooh, hematite genuine. So this is a Daniel Smith probably. Let's see. Yep. Daniel Smith. And I know a lot of you um, will leave comments about how you're boycotting Daniel Smith because of the, the genuine controversy, but I'm I'm still going to buy them. I, I have the information, but I love too many of the colors, and I don't have any dupes from anywhere else. Schmincke is probably my favorite brand just because of the super granulating all-in they've done on the super granulating, but Daniel Smith is a very close second for me. Um, so I'm really excited to try this. And I've got my super granulating watercolor palette right here that I've been building for a long time and I've got plenty of spots left and as you can see no blacks no real blacks for these two little fellas so that should be really fun too I can swatch that out oh I'm so excited so this is just like my birthday Christmas anniversary rolled all into one so thank you so 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 much let's go through the individual colors when we swatch them 
First things first, I wanted to paint this box and of course leave that adorable sticker because <laughs> it's so cute. And I just painted it with my super cheap purple acrylic paint that I got in the like cheap bin on either Blick or Jackson's or Jerry's Artorama, probably Jerry's Artorama. I decided I wanted to use some washi tape. I had this gold and this bronze with a swirl. I thought the bronze with the swirl probably looked better than the gold, so that's what I went for. And yeah, just decorated it up because I want to use this and reuse it and reuse it. There are certain moments in the studio that are just so satisfying, like bone deep satisfaction. <laughs> this is one of those moments when I can just glob paint on something and spread it around with a big old brush and it's not trying to be be anything. It's just it's just for the motion and the feel and the look of moving paint around on something in a no pressure way. Oh my gosh, that's one of my favorite things. So this is the final box and this is what I'll use for the no box art box challenge. And now my dear friends, it is time to swatch and I want to swatch the super granulating watercolors, the metallic watercolors, and these beautiful acrylograph paint pens. They're acrylic paint pens from Archer and Olive. Archer and Olive, I talked a little bit about this in that other video with the bunny where I was um, were using <laughs> the Artbox Takeover and the Artbox Takeover Challenge. And I went a little nuts even in that video, but I have to tell you, these are so beautiful. Just one after another. They come out onto the page beautifully. They don't come out too fast. They don't come out too slow. I really love, 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 love these. I cannot tell you how every color I was using, I just loved more and more. Then had so many ideas for how I would use them and in what sort of realm. And I think my plan for these, obviously I wanna use them in my studio, obsessed, but I also think they will be so amazing for travel. They are a lot easier to travel with than the grabby paint pens. The grabby paint pens are my favorite for in the studio because they are so juicy. But one of the problems with them being quite that juicy is that they could just explode in your bag if you were trying to carry them around. So this is just such a great option. They're so slender. They're so thin. They're so portable. They work beautifully. I cannot get over how beautiful the colors are. <laughs> and I love this particular palette of colors. Like the colors that she sent me go so well together. I cannot wait to try to use these for a portrait. This flesh tone in particular is gonna be so much fun to try to use. I've got a baby pink. I've got a beautiful warm deep yellow, like an Indian yellow. I've got all these blues and greens. Oh, it's like right up my alley. And then I have this brick red. That's the last one that I'll show you in a bit. And that will be perfect too for all kinds of things. I just, I don't know what to tell you other than every single one of these pens made my mind wander with all the things I wanted to do with them. There is a set on the Archer and Olive website for the Acrylograph Pens Jewel Collection with a three millimeter tip. And I think that's probably what these were from. It says that it includes two replacement tips, eco-friendly packaging, signature ampersand on the cap, which is true. Um, and yeah, they're just, they're really cool. They are great for decorating bullet journals. And I think that's what they were originally intended for, but I plan to paint with them and I love them so much. I've already used them. Obsessed. So happy. And I think they go perfectly with my suey gouache. That's why I wanted to show you the pan, uh, the full pan out. So these gorgeous metallic paints. Okay. Where do I begin? First of all, they're so creamy. They're so thick. They go down beautifully as you'll see, because I do make a test piece focusing on these. I cannot get over the colors. They're so pretty. Like, look how beautiful. Uh -huh. So I dripped some water just to pre-wet them, but it really wasn't necessary. They came to life a lot faster than my fine tech gold palette that I have. This uh, packaging says that Komorabi is a simple word, and I hope I'm saying it right. Please, anyone who speaks Japanese, feel free to correct me in the comments. But it says that it is a simple word in Japanese, which describes the subtle beauty of sunlight shining through the leaves of the trees. How beautiful is that? And the dance the rays make. OMG. Our watercolor paint set has been created with artists in mind, thank you, focusing on a high level of pigmentation and a soft texture to our paints. Very true on the soft texture. Definitely can attest to that. This set includes six jewel-inspired metallic paints, ruby, amethyst, sapphire, emerald, citrine, and rose quartz. The way that I experienced them was that the ruby was like a pyrrole red. It was the warm red. The amethyst was of just a very straightforward purple. The sapphire was this beautiful blue. I don't know if you would call it like a thalo blue or an ultramarine. It is hard to tell without another blue to 
compare it against. I did make mixes when I made my painting that's coming up in a little bit. I did mix the red, the ruby red, and the citrine yellow, and they mix beautifully. So that was surprising to me. I did not look at these and think these are going to be mixers. They are. They mix well. So I actually wish I had done a color wheel, and I'm sure I will in the future at some point, but they, they are just so pretty. This emerald was so stunning. You know green is my favorite color, so obviously I'm going to be partial to the emerald, but the whole palette spoke something different to me when I was looking at all the colors from everything that she sent me and that's what I tried to think about with picking something to paint. So the emerald did not get a starring role in the final painting but it will in future paintings. I'm totally obsessed. The citrine is very strong. It holds its own against these other colors. It really does a beautiful job. Now I don't have any light fast information about these. I have to tell you I don't really care because I only care about light fastness on a piece that is getting hung up on the wall. If I'm hanging something up on the wall or definitely selling something, I have to make sure I'm using the best materials possible and that they last as long as possible because you don't want to sell something to someone and then they hang it up and a year later it looks totally different. Miranda Watson actually has some amazing um, footage of stuff that she is doing with light fast tests on her own where she puts things in her full blast Colorado sun windows in the mountains of Colorado and it's amazing how much things will change it's actually shocking some colors like don't even appear anymore you can't see them at all it looks like the paint there was no paint it looks like it was just white paper and then she shows you the before or the part that wasn't in the sun and it's like oh my gosh that was a red or a blue or a violet or something and it's just gone so those are really interesting experiments to run for yourself but I don't care. Look how shiny. Look how beautiful. Look how metallic. Look how stunning. Mm, love them. Love these paints. They're so much fun. But I don't, I don't care if something's going to fade or even disappear. If it's in my sketchbook, it's going to be closed until I just open it, glance at it once in a while. Mostly I take pictures of that work right after I do it. And the pictures are what I'm more relying on. And the pictures are what I need to make sure I have good storage for and good quality of um, for long term. So I have a lot of things I would more consider toys. And that's what category I'm putting this in. This is for fun for me in my sketchbook work, in my personal work for myself. And I love it. Now these might be excellent light fastness. I just genuinely didn't look into it and I don't know. So that's not, this isn't really a full review video for that palette. Uh, if you're looking for that information and this made you interested in that palette, then you'll, I'm sure you'll be able to find that on YouTube because we have it all. ArtTube has everything you're looking for. So I know you'll find that video. Then finally, she sent me these two blacks and this was actually all we had talked about. <laughs> When she emailed me and said, hey, can you give me a safe mailing address for you and I'll mail you something, I knew it was probably going to be a black granulating paint, watercolor paint. Obviously, I was very shocked when it was all the things, but the, she actually sent me two paints. And this one, the cobalt black, is um, um, the Mission Gold. And it is a cool black. And I know that might sound funny that you can have a cool and a warm black. You will see what I'm talking about because the hematite from Daniel Smith right here is so clearly a warm black. And I don't think you'll see it until I put more water on the swatch and it can kind of move and groove and do what it does. But the cobalt black was a straightforward black where if you looked at it, that's the kind of paint that you would say to yourself, that is what I think of when I'm thinking of black. It is a straightforward, like a lamp black. But the hematite from Daniel Smith is warm and it has some browns, some deep brick reds, some burnt sienna, some burnt umber. You can see it all in there. And I'm not saying those pigments are in there. Those are the colors my eye is seeing when I look at the paints. So you can see one is cool and one is warm. And I think it comes across even more clearly, I'm just giving you another pan of my stunning super granulating watercolors. I love them so much. I cannot tell you how much I love them and these blacks fit perfectly. But I think the warm and the cool comes across a lot more clearly. And there they live right there. Those are the two new black paints fit perfectly in my palette. This swatch lets you see very clearly the cool versus the warm. Look how cool the cobalt looks compared to how warm and almost brownish the hematite looks. And I think you really can see it there. So hopefully that left cool, right warm, you can see what I'm talking about there. But here is the swatch. 
of the palette that I keep in the palette box with the paints. I'm obsessed, can't, I'm just looking at this right now. I wanna stop recording and start painting. I just wanna get my studio and paint. I love these so much. Thank you so much for sending these. They fit in perfectly with my super granulating watercolor set and I am already using them and loving them. It actually is really nice to have these and you can actually use them <laughs> to mix with more straightforward colors like a just straight up lemon yellow and you can have a lot more fun. They will make things granulating. So when I looked at this color palette and thought, what do I want to make? And I really wanted to use a lot of the metallic paint. I thought of another leaf scene. I made a little leaf painting with my super granulating watercolors a while back. I only filmed the tail end of it when I realized you might want to see. This one I'm filming start to finish with the metallic paints. I loved how concentrated the color was. I loved the punch that you get the, for the pigment that you have on your brush. It was super, I don't know how else to say it, but like glidey. Does that make sense? <laughs> These paints were so glidey. <laughs> <laughs> my brush just like glided was glid gl gliding over <laughs> the paint and then the paint on the paintbrush was gliding over the page just so easily so delicious this was so much fun and I was listening to a podcast and just enjoying myself having a ton of fun painting this I loved how moody mixing the blue into the purple made things look and I tried to mix a lot of blue when I would dab it in so it would kind of retain its blueness. I didn't want it to just look like a darker purple. I wanted it to look like blue. I definitely think that came across especially in the final product. I loved using these paints. They were so much fun. I actually am really looking forward to making another painting with my Kiritake Gonzai Tombi paints that I got and with these mixed in. I think that they will work beautifully together. And the, pa the palette, the actual pans in the palette, the extra large full pans that are actually more like the size of two plus full pans, but they're less full, they're more shallow. They are a really delicious size and shape pan to use because your brush has so much room to groove around and move around in there. And this is definitely another one of those paintings. You all are probably learning by now that I have these moments when I'm painting where I want to stop because I'm afraid I'm gonna mess it up. This was one of those moments. I put the first black down, so I'd moved on from the metallic paints for a little bit, put them aside for a minute, and moved on to the blacks, and I was nervous. <laughs> I was super nervous because I already loved how this looked, just the silhouette, and I knew I had a lot of details to fill in, but I already loved it. And I was like, oh, I hope this doesn't go like that owl went last video. <laughs> I made this owl and I loved it so much more before it was filled in. But lucky, 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 lucky for you, I'm going to give you a heads up. I loved the end product better. So this time... I actually did enjoy filling the whole thing in. I don't think I messed it up. I don't think I made it worse. I think I made it better. But I actually would be super interested to hear your thoughts below. Let me know if you like this phase with either no branches filled in, just the background, or just the branches filled in and the leaves stark white. I think I'm going to start experimenting with that more in my artwork. I've been thinking about it a lot, and I do it with hair a lot. I've always done a lot of leaving white spots in hair intentionally unpainted and I really love that but I never thought about doing it for other things like landscapes or animals and I'm I've been thinking about it so much I'm gonna start trying and experimenting with it I think this would be cool just like this but I did proceed to fill the rest in because I had a lot of details I was planning to use the acrylograph pens for and if I'd stopped here they wouldn't even have made it into the video <laughs> and I love them too much for me to allow that to happen so these are fall leaves with a sort of dusk purpley blue background and I saw the reference picture on Pixabay and really deviated from the look of the picture once I started laying paint down. I even obviously did different silhouettes. I really took a lot of creative license with this but it was I would say inspired by a Pixabay reference picture of some leaves with this type of I think they call it bokeh background. I might be saying that wrong too but it's that sort of blurry background where your eye just focuses on the foreground and the background becomes blurry and just almost like a mood and I really love that effect. So I think that came across. I'm really happy with that. The paints were super concentrated. 
the metallic is very much something you see from an angle. So it still reads as the color. It, the color is the star of the show with these paints. And I don't think that's always the case. Like for instance, with my Harry Potter set that I got from Emily Grace Palettes in a recent video, I think that the sparkle and the shimmer was the star of that show. The colors were very changing. And so I, I planned a piece that didn't really rely on the colors reading as anything in particular. They were potion bottles. So it could be any color potion. Potions, and in, in, it's invented. It's not real. It's make-believe. So when you're playing with make-believe, like if you painted a dragon, you can make it any color or no color or a total color shifting shimmer color, and it wouldn't matter. But with this, I actually did want, the colors were a big reason I picked this reference photo. So I did want it to read with the colors that I was intending it to have. And that worked. These metallic paints are very good for that. They read the color they are. When you move the page around, you can see some of the glitter and the shimmer. But other than that, it is very much what it is intended to be. You could actually do a whole painting with these and not care too much about the metallic piece of it. And it wouldn't get in the way of what you're trying to render. So I think that's really fun and a really cool different thing about this particular paint set than other paint sets that I've used that are focused on being metallic. So here's your super slow delicious paint peel because we are moving on to details with the acrylograph pens at this point. And as you can see, I did use the green. I could not help myself. And I did dab a little bit of that emerald in there just because I needed it in my life. And I do really love how that came out. So I used these Acrylograph Archer and Olive acrylic paint pens to do the details on the leaves. The leaves in the picture had a lot of veins and spots and wrinkles and things like that. And I didn't want to do it all, but I did want to suggest it. And I think it gave the piece a lot of depth. So I'm happy with the choice to use these pens in this painting. I really love how the painting came out, but I'm really interested to hear what you think and if there was any stage of this painting where you would have stopped. Because we've been talking a lot about going a little too far and that one more layer, one more detail, one more art material feeling that we sometimes get <laughs> when we're working. And I definitely get that syndrome a lot. So I always like to run things by you all and see, do you guys think there was a moment where you would have said, okay, that's too much, that's too much. You should have gone back to the prior layer or you should have gone back to the prior element or whatever, like you went too far. I don't think that's the case with this piece. I love this piece, but I'm always interested to hear what you all think. So I enjoyed using all of these fun toys in my studio. I love them so much. I genuinely felt like it was my birthday. I don't understand why she was so wonderful and lovely and sweet and nice to send me these, but I think it's a great idea. If you do have materials you're not loving and you're not enjoying and you know someone who would love them and feel this way about them, get those materials over to them and right on out of your studio. It's a great way to share and declutter at the same time. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to like, subscribe, and leave me a comment with what you thought. Until next time, remember, create something cute.